welcome you to the first event of the 2013 Civil Rights Game. For those of you who don't know, the reason we started the Civil Rights Game is because we really noticed, we focused a lot on Jackie Robinson and all the accomplishments that he had and, and really what he went through um, as he entered the league. And we also wanted to give back and we wanted to have an educational process for our fans and show that, you know, civil rights never really ends. And it's something that we should always be continually thinking about. So this roundtable discussion is something that we had started really to set the stage on why we do the civil rights game. Baseball cares about this issue. And, you know, the work that the committee is doing, certainly, you know, I've sat and talked to the commissioner about this. People's hearts are in the right place. However, not everybody is going to grow up in a home that's conducive to reach out and grab opportunities. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can provide at a young age for people to be able to play, and if things aren't great at home or I don't have somebody to look up to at home, I've got a coach, I've got teams, I've got something that I can feel like I'm a part of and that people are counting on me, I think those are invaluable yeah. uh, things that you can learn at a, at a young age. No doubt about it. Uh, the, the, the next can, thing, can, I was, can, can I just say one thing? I think your film was invaluable too in this area. You know, it, all, of, all of our kids have seen 42, and to take them back, to be able to take them back and take them back in a contemporary way, and I thought it was genius uh, to put Jay Z's track on top of it so that they could you know embrace it further I think anytime we can put the game in a such a light I think you know it, it, it clicks with you know, our young people and there's no telling how many kids you affected by your film so well, thank you it, it's look I, I've said before we're known for making our superhero movies Batman and Superman but the greatest superhero movie we'll ever make is the Jackie Robinson story so um, I'm investing in you today because mm. what I want you to take away from today oh. is how important all of this is. The people sitting in front of you, the people sitting behind you, the people who aren't here because you are worth investing in. And every young person out there, there is somebody like that for you. If you don't know who they are, just believe they are there. But don't you ever stop believing in yourself. Everyone up here at one point in time wanted to quit. And they did, they quit something. But most importantly, the majority of what they did and what they needed to do, they persevered and got it done. And so we are here for you, but most importantly, don't ever forget young men, young women, men and women, be there for yourself, and that's what's worth investing in. I think it's important, young men, young women that are, that are out there, you learn your history. You know, learn, take some time, not just to focus on how many home runs, you know, Hank Aaron hit, you know, how many home runs Frank Robinson hit and, you know, gold gloves and all these things. Don't, don't just focus on that. Take a little time, pick up a book, pick up a book, read their story, and the, the struggles that they had to go through to, to even be able to leave the house and have the dignity uh, uh, and the, the wherewithal and the, the intestinal fortitude to deal with the challenges of playing Major League Baseball, but the challenges of life at the time. So that what? So that the next generation could have it a little bit better, and then the next a little bit better and a little bit. We should be making <clears throat> progress. All these men down here poured something into me. I'll never forget Willie Randolph. I'm struggling. He talked to me. He took time. He wasn't worried about me taking his position. Willie Horton working with the Mariners. Here's what you need to do, son. You got to get that bad head out. <laughs> but he wasn't worried about anything else. Frank, he's tired of me. I, I used to wear him out sitting on the airplane. So what do you think about this situation? Yeah, well, well, what about this? Hey, man, I'm trying to go to sleep. Well, hold on, wake up. What did you do when you were talking about what now? Hank Aaron used to look through the hat. You did what, Hank? What? How'd you do that? What were you looking at? 
picked their brains, but they unselfishly gave back. No doubt. And I got a story for that, too. 19, Frank, what year was it? You were managing Baltimore. You guys lost 18 games in a row, 18, 87? 21 at the beginning of the season. <laughs> right about, right, 89, right around game 17 or 18, I was moved from center field to third base. Um, terrible experiment. <laughs> Never played the infield in my life. And that's, that's another story. I still harbor. Okay. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, no, let me get over it. <laughs> anyway, giving back, giving back, throwing down the rope so someone else can climb up it. In the middle of losing 17, 18 games in a row, Frank Robinson walked from his dugout. He was managing the Baltimore Orioles. And I was over near the third baseline, walked over. Now, this is a Hall of Famer. I'm just a guy that's struggling in the major leagues. Walks over and, you know, yes, Mr. Robinson, call me Frank. Uh, he says, listen, I know you're struggling. Um, I broken my ankle. I played 60 days uh, with a broken ankle. That was before MRIs. And uh, or the first MRI, actually, the White Sox ever took was on my ankle. So that's how long ago yes, it was. Anyway, Frank came over to me and said, listen, you can play in this league. You have the ability. I see the way you carry yourself, and you're going to go far. Just keep at it. Keep a positive attitude and everything. And in, the, in my head, I'm like, you're the one that's lost 17 games in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be talking to you about some positive attitude. <laughs> but he took the time and gave that to me. So, so if, if there's any lessons that can be learned from that, and I, I, I feel guilty if I don't you know, do some of that. If I don't learn, if you don't learn, if young men, if you don't learn from this, you know, you're missing something. My exposure or my interest, my background to baseball was through my grandmother. And I think we've heard over and over again about knowing your history. Um, oftentimes, it's very hard to watch. I know that when I watched uh, 42, um, I cried halfway through the movie. I couldn't, you know, I just couldn't keep it all in. It was, it was tough to watch, but it was oh so necessary, and it's something that we have to instill in our kids across the board um, to make sure that they know our history and know how uh, even things as diverse that we don't even think about all the time in um, talking about civil rights, uh, like baseball, um, are really important to um, our, our background and our growth and making sure that we stay aware and stay engaged um, to make sure, as Kenny says, that we make progress and that things change. Civil rights is not just a black issue. It's a United States. It's a world issue. And it's almost like the game of baseball in a sense that baseball is an individual game played in a team concept. You're responsible to do your job and the team's success will happen, and everybody benefits. And the same thing happens in the movement here, what we're doing with the civil rights game, and civil rights is continually in this country. But you do your job and you take care of the things that you're supposed to do, taking care of people, being kind, handling yourself properly, then the rest is going to take care of itself. And so hopefully the lesson today is that, and also remembering your history. It's where you came from. Is going to help you determine where you're going to go. Appreciate it. Have a great night. Thank you.